everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm going to talk about how we can step more fully into our power, some downloads I've been getting recently, and also, I want to respond to some things that came up after I released my last podcast, so if you haven't listened to the one on why Faraday and I almost broke up, I highly recommend listening to that. You don't need to listen to it to listen to this one, but it does help with context. And first, I would love for all of us to take a deep breath together. (laughs) So if you are in a space where you can, I invite you to close your eyes and maybe put your hand on your belly and breathe into your hand, like try and expand your belly as much as possible. And then imagine the energy going all the way up the top of your head and the top hold your breath. So breathe in and hold it. And then sigh outward. (sighs) So, wow. Uh, The last uh, podcast I made was like, um, I feel like it's the first time I really allowed you guys to see me all the way. uh, Me fully in my power, not giving a fuck what anyone thinks. And also like really, really speaking my truth. And there were some things where when I was listening to that podcast back, I was like, did I say that? Like, I don't even remember saying that. I was definitely channeling that. And also I was able to find my truth even more like uh, through the process of creating the podcast. So thank you for being on the journey with me. Um, Today I want to talk about... how to more fully step in our power so there's a lot of a lot of you have reached out and said whoa first off like whoa that was amazing thank you for sharing and being vulnerable and also thank you for just being in your power because this is the thing that they don't want you to know is the more that you are fully in your power the more you are activating everyone else around you to be more fully in their power even if it's on a even if they don't realize it consciously Even if it's a subconscious thing, it's all vibrations. So when people can feel us allowing source energy to come through more strongly and like therefore being more fully ourselves, they're like, there's something in them that's like, well, if they're going to do that, if they're going to let themselves be seen like that, if they're really going to like go for it, then I want to go for it in my own way. And so we can activate, inspire everyone in our lives, even if it's on social media, not even if, but you know, like, especially on social media, wherever we want to put it out there, it's going to activate. So I'm saying that to say, go do it. (laughs) Do the thing that is making you feel like you need to be brave because it's vulnerable to be seen. And also, thank you for seeing me and honoring me in my process because it was very vulnerable to put that out there. I had a huge emotional hangover after releasing that episode. And and then there was, there was some gaps I realized that I didn't share with you um, in, the, in the episode of, of how I came to be who I am. Because a lot of you see me like, oh, wow, this is Brittany. She's always been like this, fully in her power, amazing. She just popped out of the womb like that. And I was like, no, it is a journey. And that's what's beautiful is it's always a journey, right? And and that's the story. Like, we are the main characters in our own life. And the journey of it is is the most fun. And I feel like if I share a little bit more with you about my journey, it can also inspire you on yours. So something that I realize is very important. Like the whole world is in a big, they call it cognitive dissonance. So this is like when you believe something consciously, but you don't allow yourself to subconsciously connect that this is your belief. And so the world, like the mass consciousness of the world is operating on a level where it's like, this is normal. This is just how we live. And we like get up and go to work in an office and we don't like our jobs and we don't like our life and da, 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 and all these things. Um, and also from a, uh, a, a, a standpoint of like, especially women stepping in their power, there's so much cognitive dissonance. So that means like consciously and, subco- and subconsciously it is not connecting fluidly of what you believe and how you 
and like what you believe subconsciously, how you're acting, everything. Like it's just like the loop. There's some holes in this loop and the disconnection is there. And what I realized in order to close the loop and have your, your conscious and your subconscious feel safe to go all the way through like the energy, you know, in and out of your conscious and subconscious is there needs to be some honoring of the experience we've already had. So like so many of you, whether you're a man or a woman, but I'm speaking especially to women, you have had many moments in your life where you felt, hold on, my dog <laughs> wants to come in and she's like scratching at the door and looking so cute. One second. So a lot of you have had many moments in your life where you got this flash of like who you could be in your full power. And you realize that there's this big gap between vibrationally, so it all starts, um, everything is vibration. It all starts with vibrations. So vibrationally you realize this could be on psychedelics, this could be seeing another woman fully in their power, this could be just like getting this flash of like aha moment like while you're meditating of like whoa, this is me if I wasn't scared, this is me if I let go of all the negative beliefs. And there's this gap of like, how do I get there? And I have a lot of, a lot of beautiful souls of all of you reaching out on Instagram, especially, and you're like, I see that you got there, like in your own version, you know, in your own life, on your own timeline. And I want to be there too. I want to be in my power. And I, I want you guys to be in your power because the more you're fully in your power, the more we can play together and make beautiful things in the world together. Um, so, so I was talking to Faraday about this because we were like talking about the podcast. We made a couple more about, about just like how the energy of the world right now and for many centuries has been dominated by masculine energy. So Everyone, all of us have masculine and feminine energy inside of us. And the goal is to have this un divine union within yourself. So your, your masculine and your feminine energy within yourself is balanced out so that you can, you know, be able to receive the energy from the source and have it flow through you in a way that is the most powerful for you and everyone around you. Because we live in a world that is dominated by masculine energy, it's like there is nothing wrong with men. There is nothing wrong with masculine energy. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> if, you saw, if you saw that on YouTube, my beautiful man just walked by naked. Okay, so um, there's nothing wrong with men. <laughs> They're very beautiful. Um, or masculine energy. It's more about having the energy of the world be balanced. So it would be the same if the world was dominated by feminine energy for many centuries. Like, And this is actually, if you saw the Barbie movie, it's funny that I'm talking about it because I never thought I would be into this movie, but I shared it on Instagram that I had a friend who was also into the same things as me and she was like, no, no, you should watch it. It brings up some cool stuff. And this is like, it, this the Barbie movie plays this out. Like in Barbie land, the feminine is like the energy is completely into the feminine, like the, f the women rule Barbie land. Right. And you can see that it's unbalanced. Like the men are like, well, what is my place? What am I doing here? Do I even like the, like she, she was like, Ken, I don't even know where you live. Like they don't, it's like, do they even have a home? You know, they just, they're there to serve the feminine in Barbie land. But that's funny because in today's world, it's actually flipped. It's like masculine is very dominating. And so this is out of balance, especially the feminine feels this. And, and so I, I was talking to Farad about this and like a lot of uh, sharing, like a lot of experiences of how I was raised and things that I have dealt with. And he's like, what? You had to go through that? And I'm like, yeah, a lot of men are not even aware that this is a thing because they've never had to experience this. And so when I talk to him about this and he honors it and he's like, wow, that's really terrible. Like you shouldn't have been treated like that or you shouldn't have been, you know, made to think you were dumb just because you're a woman or objectified because you're, you know, your body's beautiful according to the standards of today. Like la 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 la, right? And in that moment I was like, yeah. And I feel, and I've created a lot of space for myself um, 
but I feel like as a collective, we need to create more space for women to grieve. So what does that mean? Um, when you're waking up to all of this, so in the Barbie movie, again, I really recommend re watching this. I don't think it gives the solution, but I think it has a lot of valid points in the movie. And in the movie, like the women are helping wake each other up. Like, so in Barbie, well, I don't want to go into the plot of the movie, but basically like they're helping each other wake up to the fact that like men have taken over and it's patriarchy and they're, they're like making themselves smaller and lessen their power. And then they're like activating each other and waking each other up. And this is actually what's happening. Like when you listen to my podcast, the, the vibration is helping you wake up to your own power. And in the moment when you feel that and you actually realize it, you'll see a lot of women be very angry. And that is totally valid. I've had t lots of moments in my life where I'm like, what the actual fuck? How This is not okay for women to be treated this way. This is not okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. And you see this a lot in the feminist movement where they just, they take that anger and they just say men are bad. And I'm not saying this is all the feminist movement, but this is what is like glorified on social media and mainstream because, again, if you're in a patriarchal society, they just want to make the feminist mu movement a bad thing because they want them to go away. And so they're like, oh, this is just a bunch of crazy bitches who are just angry all the time, which is not true. There is valid anger there. I think in order to process, so this is what I'm saying, in order to process that anger in a healthy way, it's creating a space for this grief because what it actually is, anger is when you feel hurt and you don't know how to process that emotion and then it just bubbles up and bursts out in anger, right? And what I realize is the grief is, the grief is, uh, is, is being treated this way. Yes, this is something that we are, we are consciously aware of, right? But we're not victims. We are equal to men. The feminine and the masculine are equal in all ways. And so when we step out of the victim mode and we really look at the situation, we're grieving because we have allowed ourselves to be, cho like, be made small. We have allowed ourselves to be suppressed. So it's the grief of wasting so much time feeling and being allowing ourselves to believe being brainwashed but we choose our beliefs so allowing ourselves to feel that we are smaller than men or the masculine or just small in the world or something's wrong with us and in order for us to be accepted we need to be perfect we need to be the most beautiful we need to always be young instead of just being who we are you know just being accepted for being souls on the timeline who are just as smart and just as and take and deserve to take up just as much space as men in every way so i feel that this is an important point to bring out because if you just stay in the anger then that is choosing to be a victim and I'm not saying I'm not doing this to say that we created the reality of you know women being suppressed. I'm saying you can choose to step out of the victim mode and and choose to believe this is a choice, so you believe whatever you want. I have found that it's the most powerful and empowering for me to choose to believe that, yes, the world is going through a lot of darkness. It has been for 13,000 years since Atlantis fell. And we as a collective oversoul, all of us are connected up in the spirit world or wherever you want to say in the spirit world. Um, and as a collective consciousness, we have chosen men, women, everyone who is involved to go through this collective darkness to explore it because we didn't, we had never explored it on an oversoul level. Like that, the oversoul level is like all of us together as one in spirit. And as this group, we were like, we want to experience what it feels like to go through this darkness, right? So we've been doing that for 13,000 years. And this is when religion and governments and suppression and totalitarianism and like all of these different ways to 
explore the darkness, explore negativity. And right now we are coming out of that. This is what we are all doing. We are waking up out of this darkness. And one of the things that we are waking up to is, oh, while we're in this game of exploring the darkness and the negativity that exists in the universe, we have chosen as a species to suppress women. And as a woman in this timeline, my soul was brave enough to come through this timeline as like one of the most sensitive people that I know and one of the most like aware and awake person that I was around for most of my life. Like as in I didn't have anyone to ask what the fuck's going on. I just went through all of it. I went through so much darkness. And one of the ways that I chose to go through and explore this darkness and transform it into light, into something positive, was to be born a woman. And to be born a woman in a suppressive religious cult <laughs> who and, and to be molested by my neighbor sexually and to be objectified by my father and and to be made into an like this thing where my sexuality and me being the feminine was something that either needed to be suppressed, protected, or just put away. Like there was something wrong with me because I was a woman. And then I, I created a lot of space for grief. I, I grieved this without really realizing it consciously, but I was like, what the actual fuck? Like, why is this happening to me? Like, why, 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 why? And then I chose to step into my power and look at it more from my higher self perspective where I'm like, no, I know I'm an everlasting soul who is worthy of love and connection and everything in the universe just for existing. So why did I choose this timeline where there's so much fuckery happening? And where I observe so much fucked upness in the world. And I feel it in my body. It's like also being a woman is being so fucking sensitive. Because as a woman, we, because we birth things through, because we are more actively creators in a way, because we literally are bringing life through us, we are also energetically more sensitive in the sense that we work out the energy in the field actively without realizing it consciously so if there is anything in your field that is negativity you are going to be a lot more sensitive to it than a man on the initial level men can be just as sensitive if they want to be but it happens automatically for women and for a lot of us women we're like sometimes we would like to opt out because you know like when it's your time when it's your period when your time of the month you're bleeding Sometimes you can feel all of the darkness in the world and it's like it's like going through your womb because you are tapping into the collective and you are energetically helping transform it actively during your time of the month. This is why it's very important to be gentle with yourself, connect to your higher self, do whatever you need to do to nourish your body because you're actually doing work on a spiritual level which in a patriarchal society is never recognized. So how do you create the space for grief? To, to, well, I, um, how do you create the space to process these emotions to a point where you can let them go and transform them into something powerful? For me, like without realizing it, I, I did a lot of this through my journaling every single day since I was 12. I mean, almost, almost every single day I would journal. I would write every single morning. I would write, wake up and write in my journal how I was feeling, what I was going through. Like I would get so angry in my journal. I would grieve. I would write it all out. And it was like, I was telling a story. I was honoring my story. And I was also speaking to my higher self. And I was also creating my story as I wrote because I was like I don't choose to live like this I choose to believe this I choose to manifest this reality and then it was actively coming true <clears throat> another way to allow space for grief healthy healthy space something I want to say too is that it is very easy to get into the darkness all the way to the point where you're like drowning it so 
There is something in trauma awareness where there's a term that you learn. It's called tie trading, which is a weird word, but it means it's like turning on the faucet and letting the water come out and then closing the faucet. So in emotional release, emotional processing, what's very important is doing something called tie trading. So it's important to do this where you create a container, a safe container, and you allow yourself to process whatever emotions you need to process. And then you close the container because if you leave that open, you will keep processing forever. And then you will not only process what you have for yourself, you will start processing everything for the collective. This is what happens when we're on our period. And you know how that is. If you were on your period for the rest of your life, it would be like, what the fuck? This is too much, you know? So there is a reason why we choose to create these safe containers because then you can let it go and you put it away knowing that you have honored it, knowing that you can also create another container where you can open it up and look at it and process it. In the women's circles that I organize, I do something called swamping, which comes from an amazing woman. Uh, I call her Mama Gina. She has a really great book um, called Pussy, P-U-S-S-Y. Yes, Pussy. I highly recommend reading it. It's very activating for everything I'm talking about right now. And she created this thing called swamping. So I do it in the women's circle. Totally love it. And you can do your own variation of this at home or with women that you're around. And so what you do is I found that if I'm in a group of women that I'm hosting, I put the timer on for four minutes and you have someone who is witnessing you. You can also do this by yourself. It's so, so powerful when you allow yourself to be witnessed in this. So have someone who's sitting in front of you who's witnessing you. They do not speak. They do not try and fix you. They do not touch you. They just witness and honor your story of you emoting, you letting these emotions through. And then you have pillows, you have something like pillows and like soft things to like hit. Ours is really nice. I've also done it in the forest with, with uh, some of our retreats. So at that point, you can just <laughs> use whatever is around. Um, but if you're at home, you can get some pillows and then you put meditation music on the timer for four minutes and then you literally it's all emoting which is literally letting out emotion so there's no speaking here no like verbal speaking because when you speak you are in your mind when you emote you are in your body you are releasing the energy that is stuck through your body and so what i have found is that uh, i tell people let the emotions come through whether it's laughing, crying, screaming, and it goes in waves. So if you don't feel like you have anything that you need to let out, that's okay. Just be in a meditative state, like check in, use as an opportunity to check in with your higher self. And then what I found is that it will be like this wave of like everyone releasing emotion at once. I've done this in like groups of like 30 to 40 women all at once. Like everyone's going Rah! and like hitting pillows, screaming into pillows, like just being like rah and then like laughing and crying sometimes like sobbing just like really letting it out and then there's this wave of like silence where everyone's just kind of like okay i'm grounding into myself i'm letting this sink in and then another wave comes you know and there's no wrong way to do this you can also do it um mama gina does it where she has like sometimes she gets together with her friends and they have like 10 people who are in a circle, 10 women in a circle, and like one at a time, they all get up and just let it out, you know, with a timer, safe container. And again, it's all just emotions being released, and then they sit down, and the next person goes. So you can do this however you want. If you're doing it with one on one partners, like someone witnessing you, after the four minutes are up, you thank your partner, maybe give them a hug, and then they host, they you host them. So it goes back and forth, which is something very powerful when it's like, okay, this is sometimes I have have women say like, this is super awkward when I first do it. But then like when you witness the, like when you give that back, that service to witnessing the, the sister that's in front of you, you're like, wow, this is actually very powerful to also witness and to be, and to hold the space. So this I have found to be a very safe container for grieving. 
Another reason why I feel like sometimes women don't talk about this is because it can, again, it can go downhill very quickly, like where they just start complaining about everything. And this is another thing that has been created by <laughs> by our society today to disempower us is connection through complaining. And you will notice this in many societies uh, this is not just with women, this is with everyone. And I found this to be like particularly with British people, but everyone does this where it's like, how how is your day going? Oh yeah, but you know, this thing happened and then that thing happened. And you're like connecting through the negative things that are happening in your life. So if you're specifically talking about <laughs> like grieving about like waking up and being like, what the fuck? Like, I'm realizing I've like given up my power and like for so many years I wasted so much time and I want to do all these things. That is a valid share. If you are like sharing whatever you need to share, that's amazing. But if you're like immediately like blaming anyone else, like this is when you are stepping into victimhood. So you're actually giving your power away. So for instance, when I share about me being sexually molested by my neighbor, I made a whole podcast about this. I did not give my power away. I said, this is what happened. I do not think it's okay. I don't think anyone should go through it. I chose to go to the police. I chose to speak up. I chose who I was going to be in response to that situation. So I didn't sit there saying he's a fucking idiot I you know he's like this terrible blah, because this is a waste of energy and also it's giving my power away and I know this very very much by living with a narcissist who is my father for many years where the more that you spend talking negatively about someone who has hurt you you are giving your energy to them so the most empowering thing you can do is to take your energy back do not give them any more of your energy and speak whatever you need to speak in order to let yourself reclaim your power and heal yourself and step back into your power and then let it go and in order to step back into your power it's like what did i okay what did i learn from this how am i cho who am i choosing to be in response to what just happened or who have i chosen to be in response to what happened to me growing up and this every single thing that happens to you is something that you can choose that can be something that can happen for you. And I'm talking about some of the most dark things in the world, anything that you can think of. Because if you choose to transform it into something light, if you choose to transform it into something positive, I'm talking about like light and dark energy, they say that the universe is made up of 49% darkness, 50% positive, like light energy, and 1% neutral energy. And in that neutrality between the light and the dark, you get to choose whether it is positive or negative. So if you choose positive, the, the light always wins. And this is something that the more that you realize this, the more you can choose to have every single opp opportunity. Everything is an opportunity for you to transform it into something that is more empowering for you, something that is positive in the world, something that is uplifting. And I have chosen to share my story. I didn't share my story for many years because I was like, I don't want to create more darkness in the world. Like I, I went through the darkness. Why, why do I want to share it? And like, make people relive that. And then I realized if I shared it in a way where I was sharing with you how I chose to respond to it in a positive way, how I chose to transform it into something that is bringing more light into the world, then this was something that was empowering for me. And this is, I hope that this is what comes through in my podcast is like, no, no, I'm fully in my power. Don't worry about me. I hope by sharing my story, you can be full, more fully in your power. So be very careful with how you choose to grieve all of this. It's very important to allow the emotions to go through your body. It's very important to grieve when you're stepping into your power. The more that you do this, the more you create space for you to step into your power. I think a lot of people don't know how, a lot of women do not know how to do this in a way that is positive, And so they just don't process it because they're also programmed to be 
happy and positive and submissive and like, do, 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 do. I just look like a Barbie doll all the time. And then you're like, no, actually, <laughs> there's some shit going down in the world and I have a lot of feelings about it. I need to share them. And like, this is what's really going on. So I hope that by sharing this, this is helping you to be like, okay, so I do need to do this. Here's a positive way to do it. And then the thing that I love to do at the end of all of my women's circles is have women share something that they are, this is something you could do in your journal. And I really suggest, I invite you to do this every morning for a week and see how your vibration shifts. So the first thing is, what are you celebrating in your life? And this is something that is so fucking powerful. We are programmed to believe that if we do something good, we cannot talk about it because it's going to make someone else feel small. Instead of allowing ourselves to step into this power of being like, yeah, I did it, I did it and it was amazing. So in our women's circles, and I highly recommend starting to build your network of women where you can do this with, and you can start with one of your best friends and say, hey, I want to do something where I message you and I ask you what you're celebrating. Like, what are you proud of about yourself today or in your life in general? And then I would love to share with you what I'm proud of about myself and create space to celebrate each other. The more that we do this, the more we can step into our own power and then we activate and inspire each other because... When a woman hears another woman asking for a raise, going out and traveling and and like starting following their excitement and actually loving their life, then it's like, whoa, if she's going to do that, then I'm going to do I'm going to do whatever I need to do. Like, yeah, girl, go get it, you know. Um, And the second thing is what are we grateful for? So thankfulness is something that will always put you in a good vibration. So like, what are you grateful for in your life? What are you receiving right now that you are consciously recognizing and choosing to be grateful to the universe and your higher self for? And then the third one is, what would you love more of in your life? So I like to shift it from I want, because when you, you have on a template reality, on a quantum field reality, everything already exists. Every possibility is already there. So when you say I want more of this in my life. I want more money in my life. I want a boyfriend, blah, 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 blah. whatever it is. I want more love. You are saying to your higher self in the universe, I don't have this. And your higher self, your, the universe responds to what you say and think and believe. And so if you believe that you don't have money, or if the money that you want, if you believe you don't have the love that you want, that is going to be what is keeps being reflected back to you not having money not having love if you if you say i would love more of this so you're honoring i already have it i know it's out there like in the quantum field like everything is possible so it's like yeah i would love for this to slide in like let's go you know and so you're saying I would love more money in my life for the specific thing. I would love to have more love in my life. And and you can feel like when I say this, I would love to have this. The vibration is already more soft. It's more receptive instead of I want. Like that's already like a vibration that is pushing away the thing that you want. So I invite all of you to do this in your journal in the morning or and or gather the women in your life that you can even if it starts with one woman where you can start reflecting this back and forth to each other over text message video the best is in person whatever you can do do this so what are you proud of what are you celebrating what are you grateful for and what would you love more of in your life or organize a woman's circle where you where you create this container and spread it to more women so these are things that I have found help me to process the grief and then step into my power. Because I think uh, what I notice is a lot of women, it's like sometimes they just wake up and they're like, what the fuck? Like they wake up to the reality of what's happening and they're like, I feel very surprised. I don't like this. I'm so angry. And then like they don't know what to do. They don't know how to process it. And then they kind of just slowly fall back asleep to 
I guess, you know, I'm getting some love and attention from this person because they think I'm beautiful or, you know, my Instagram post has a lot of likes. So I guess I should just cater to what social media says I should do. It's like, no, fuck that. Do the thing that you need to do in your life. And do not worry what anyone else is doing or what they're saying. And of course, sometimes it bothers you and it pisses you off. But you can immediately transform that and just be like, I do not choose to have that person in my life. I had someone write something really disrespectful on my Instagram post this morning about my friend who died. And I was just like, I wrote something really positive back. And then he just wrote a lot more negative things. And I just said, block. I just blocked them. I'm like, bye. Like, I don't have to have you in my reality. Bye. And the reason why this person is acting this way is because I'm very in my power and they don't like it. And so they're trying to find something to be upset about. And when you know all of this, you play the game of life very differently. You start looking at things and you're like seeing through them right away and you're like yeah that has nothing to do with me there's apps this is another thing a lot of women (laughs) as as a society we are programmed to believe that something is wrong with us that we need to heal that we need to become younger that we need to be more perfect in all ways and the thing is is that something's wrong with us so we will spend like a lot of women spend their whole lives trying to be better I, I'm here to tell you very gently, but very firmly, there is nothing fucking wrong with you. You are perfect. You don't need to heal in order to deserve love and connection and a place in this world. You can choose to heal to step more fully in your power, but there's nothing wrong with you. You don't need to heal in order to be accepted by your community. Does that make, I would really want to know, I want you to know that that sinks in because little little words, that is a very important part point for me because I live on Copanyang here where it's a very spiritual community and a lot of people come here to heal and to wake up in an environment that's safe and like comfortable and I totally honor that. I use this womb of an island, I like to call it, for that specific purpose in many different ways over the years, like for myself, right? But what I see is some people staying in the loop of like, I went to this healer or I did this thing and I, la, 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 and I'm, I'm more healed. But I, the energy and the vibration that I feel from them is I deserve connection now because I worked on myself. I deserve to be more loved and accepted in my community because I fixed something that's wrong with me. And all I want to do is give them a hug and be like, there's nothing wrong. Like, you're good enough the way you are, you know, like everything's okay. Just just allow yourself to be okay with who you are and realize that this is actually a belief that has been handed to you since birth by our society. And you don't have to believe it anymore. You can choose to release this belief and be like, I don't believe this. Goodbye. Bye, bye, bye. I'm perfect the way I am. I don't need to I don't need to wear makeup all the time. I'm wearing makeup right now because it's fun. I'm wearing makeup because it's fun, not because I feel like I'm not beautiful without it. Does that make sense? This, so you can do everything you want to do, but just check in like am I doing this because I feel like something's wrong with me and I need to do this in order to be more loved, accepted and chosen by the people in my life and my community and society. Or am I doing this because I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks and I'm just having fun and just vibing? Like, would you be doing this at home by yourself? You know, like if you're on your own, like, would you just be vibing with yourself and doing whatever you want? Like sometimes I wake up and I just like do a little dress up (laughs) moment by myself where I try a bunch of clothes on and like put, put all this jewelry in my hair and I'm just like put glitter on my face and like the only place I might go that day is to like get cacao the rest of the day I'm just hanging out with afro and fair day but I'm just having so much fun because it's fun to be a feminine this is the thing is when you let go of all of these negative beliefs you realize wow I'm very grateful that my soul chose to be born a woman on this timeline. Like, I love being a woman. I love feeling all my emotions. I love making a space of love in my home and having all these plants around and walking around naked all the time and singing and like watering my plants and speaking to them and making love with Faraday and hugging my dog Afro and like 
just making a beautiful, warm, yummy space that's nourishing for me and the people I love because I feel so good in my body and I love myself. And everything I do throughout the day is just this like yummy juiciness. I'm like, wow, I'm so fucking grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful to choose to come down into the timeline and experience this dream of reality that we're all collectively choosing to dream. And that I get to be myself. I get to be my own piece of the puzzle in the whole landscape of everything and how it's playing out. And I love being myself. And it feels good in my body because it's me. I'm not trying to be a random girl I see on Instagram. I'm not trying to be a model that has 5 million followers or whatever. I just want to be Brittany Bond. And that's who I am. And I love being myself. And I, I'm so excited for you to also love being yourself. You know, like to really be like, wow, I wake up and it's like, <laughs> life's great. Like recently, Faraday's, Faraday has this thing like when we first started dating is really cute. So we knew each other for like six months, even organized a play party together. I went to his retreat in Austria as friends. And then he came like, so we met on Copenhagen, came to my play party. He went back to Europe. I came out to Europe, went to his retreat. We hosted a play party together. And then I came back out to Copenhagen and then he came out, right? Like, like last November, he came out. And the first time that we like cuddled and like had like a moment together, he just said, it feels like Christmas. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he's like, you know, like, you know, when you, um, when it's like Christmas Eve and like all the presents are below the tree and like, all and like all the food is in the house and all you want to do is be home with like the people that you love and just be cozy and you like give yourself full permission to like be like completely just be in the moment and like every and it's just like you're surrounded by love and you just love being alive and I was like I didn't grow up celebrating Christmas so I don't know <laughs> but I get what he's saying and he's like and and then immediately after that he asked me out on our first date and then, you know, the timeline started where we were dating and fell in love and all the things. Um, but ever since then, like, this is a joke that we have between us, a cute joke where it's like, oh, it feels like Christmas, because now I'm starting to understand what he means by that of like this complete beingness of just like you wake up, like we wake up and like Afro comes over and gives us kisses and we cuddle and we just talk about our dreams and what we want to do that day and how we're feeling in our bodies and we look at nature and then we like get up and we both do our morning routines and we're just like vibing and everything just feels so nice and we're like in the space of love together, you know? And it really does feel like Christmas all the time. And I'm like, wow, I can live like this. This is amazing because I've lived in this home for many years and hosted a lot of beautiful events here. And like I had a whole timeline without Faraday in my home here on Copenhagen. And what I realized is I was making all of these beautiful things, you know, and I loved it and I loved doing it for myself. And then I hit this moment where I was like, I want to share this with someone, you know, like this is fun. And I've, I've, I'm like really in my power and I'm so grateful for that. And also it's more fun together, you know? And now I understand what I was feeling back then. Cause I was like, I couldn't really understand and put it into words, but I was like, there's something, it's not like something is missing, but there's something more that could be added here, you know? And this is what I, the reason why I'm sharing all this with you is because when you get through, I, I view life as this game, like imagine a video game and there's like different levels of the game. This is not to say that something, someone is better or different. It's just like we are all going to get to the end and however timeline we choose to play out of like which level we want to stay on longer and then move up and down and sideways, it doesn't matter. But like, because we're all going to get to the same place in the end, right? And what I found to be really amazing is I have played out the timeline where 
I was, you know, in relationships, not fully in my power. I was like a child and not fully in my power because I was like, wow, what's happening? And then I, I chose to step into my power, like really fully as a single person. And I allowed myself to grieve all the things I need to grieve, work through my stuff, really find myself and love myself completely. And then I was like, I want to play this level of the game, which is like, as a complete, <laughs> sorry, uh, Faraday accidentally locked Afro in the back room and her little head popped out. She's so cute. Um, so I hit this level where I was like, I'm good on my own. I feel complete on my own. I love myself. And also I want to play the game of life with someone else who's also worked through all their stuff. I mean, for the most part, right? Like there's this like threshold of like, I have worked through my trauma and my negative beliefs enough where now we can play together with, because if you don't hit this threshold and you are in a relationship, you all know what this means. We call it trauma bonding because if you don't work through your stuff and you get into a relationship, you are attracting someone into your life who helps you activate your trauma or your negative beliefs so that you have the opportunity to transform them. So you can choose to do this in relationship. I did this through many of my relationships. Or I have found it to be way more empowering to choose to do this as a single person where I'm giving myself all of the space, all of the love to really, and all of this, the tools and the resources and the support from community, from, from coaching, from therapy, to really look at myself and really find who I am. And then... I met Faraday and he had also gone through his own stuff. And then he also was willing to allow me to mirror some of those things for him that he still needs to transform. And they were successfully transformed as I shared in my last podcast. I would also like to report that life is really good right now between Faraday and I. And I am confident that on a foundational level, we are going to stay that way because of course, things come into our life, but the thing that I've always, always wanted, I've always wanted this, was someone where we could stand side by side and look out on the world and be on the same team, allowing ourselves to work through our individual challenges and our, our challenges together as a couple, but not facing each other, attacking each other, which is what most people do during trauma bonding. They get so activated by the negative beliefs that are coming up in the situation that's being created through the person they've attracted in that they, and if they don't work through their stuff, they will blame their partner. You are the reason why this is happening. I'm going to disconnect from you. I'm going to break up with you. And then they start that over with someone else. So if you get to the point where you are aware of your own stuff enough, you work through your stuff, you love yourself, you are for the most part complete within yourself as an individual, they call this divine union within yourself then you can play the game with someone else where you're like, hey, I would like to come in divine union with you, which just means like we are both balanced in our masculine and feminine and we are allowing the energy to go through both of us, like fluidly through, like from our own source connections together, fluidly back up. You know, like it's like this dance that you play with each other. And with Faraday, I totally saw that we could do this. Like I, I really believed in it. I believed in it with my whole heart and I loved him and I wanted to do this with him. And I'm so grateful that we were able to transform a lot of these things that were things that were going to make it so I didn't want to be with him, you know? And he, oh, the way I just said that made it sound like he changed himself for me. That is not true. I, Faraday allowed me to reflect back to him some things that that he chose to respond in a way where he was able to release negative beliefs and transform himself into be an even better person than he already is. He's perfect just the way he is without me in his life. And also, if he wanted to play the game with me in his life together as a divine union, then there was some things that needed to be worked out. And I'm so grateful that this is what relationships are for. You don't just bail like, I mean, you can, if it if it's unhealthy, bail. If it's unhealthy, bail. 
Um, but if it is healthy and there is enough of a strong foundation and you're supported also by the community and you reach out for help and you get coaching and counseling from people that you trust like there's so much that can be transformed there and it's such a big opportunity for us to step into our individual power and also our collective power as a couple and I just imagine like how how amazing like I'm like I want to meet more couples like us you know like we we spend most of our time like just vibing and having the best time and then like if something comes up like one of us will be like okay I'm going through this thing and what do you think how should I respond to this person and the other person reminds them of their power and supports them to speak their power and speak their truth and like step more fully into their power and it's like it's like amplify it's like we are individuals on our own and then together we're like amplifying ourselves to be more fully ourselves by being together and it's like like all of us I'm having a hard time putting this into words but I think you're getting the vibration of there's so much more to play in this game of life and in order to do that we need to allow ourselves to full more more fully step into our power and I've had so many women reach out to me and say the point that you made in the last podcast about I didn't let my partner see me because I was worried that me being in my full power, they wouldn't be able to handle it. So many of you reached out and said, I really resonate with that. That you are worried that if you allowed yourself to be seen in your full power, it would be too much for your partner. And this is also a negative belief that we have the opportunity to transform. That women fully in their power taking up all the space that they deserve to take up and living their truth and speaking their truth like can the masculine handle that there's no way you're not giving them the opportunity the choice to respond positively if you don't actually do it if you are going to decide my partner just can't handle it so I'm just gonna like not show him the, these parts of myself, these sides of myself. That's not fair to your partner. You're actually the problem in that situation because you're not being yourself all the way. Um, and in problem, there's no judgment value on this. I just mean like, it's very easy to blame our partners if we're like, no, they can't handle this, da, da, da. but that's not actually the truth. If you step out of the victim and you say, oh, I never really gave them the opportunity. It is very vulnerable when I... When I stepped into my power, even when I made this last podcast about like Faraday and I almost breaking up, I remember thinking, I don't know how he's going to take this, but I need to share this. This is, this is part of me stepping into my full power of me sharing this with the world. And I'm so grateful that he was like, yeah, yeah, I really support this. This is awesome. Like, and sharing it on his social media and supporting me and sending it to his friends and like, this is what it's like to be in a partnership that is healthy and supportive and with both people fully in their power. And this is also what you deserve. And I want this for you. Whew. There's so much more I could say. I'm trying to remember some of the things, but I feel that you are getting it. I don't, and what I need and what we need as a collective is women to allow themselves to be seen fully in their power so do it you got this I will be here to remind you that you're doing amazing and also use this as an invitation to also support other women so if you see a woman who is fully stepping in their power and sharing themselves on social media or putting themselves out there in some way honor it tell them hey good job keep going like, you're doing great. I really see you. And the more that we can see each other, the more that we can really allow ourselves to rise up together. This is something that I always say, like, we rise up together. It's not me, Brittany Bond, rising up and the, everyone else is below me. No, I want us all to fucking rise up together. This is when we're all going to have the most fun. This is when This is when the collective, we are all one organism. This is when the collective is going to be the most nourished and the most happy is when we allow all of ourselves, every single one of us as individuals to rise up. Whew. Okay, I love you guys very much. And if you haven't already, I invite you to check out 
Faraday's English podcast. Um, it's Faraday Beck, F-E-R-D-I, Beck, B-E-C-K. I'll put it in the link below. Um, because I have been doing a lot of podcasts with him recently, talking about a lot of amazing things. And yeah, there's just some yummy, good, juicy stuff over there. And I'd love to for you all to receive that vibration, the downloads, and let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, you got this. I'm sending you lots of love. I will see you in the next one. Bye.